FIV strawberry cat immunodeficiency. Feline AIDS belongs to the same family of viruses as feline leukemia virus, meaning that they both belong to the retroviridae family. This retroviridae family is characterized by being an RNA virus and presenting an envelope. Feline AIDS attacks non-neutered male cats, which circulate on the roofs of houses and fight with other cats, because the disease is transmitted through different secretions, mainly saliva and blood. It is transmitted through the blood during wounds from fights, from bites during fights. In addition, the male can transmit this disease to the females at the time of intercourse when he bites her. Once the virus enters the cat's bloodstream, we can recognize four phases in the disease. In the first there is a viremia, in which the virus passes into the blood, replicates, and is distributed through different tissues. At this time, there will be different signs, such as hypothermia, decay, anorexia. Then we are going to go to a subclinical phase, in which the virus enters the cytoplasm of the cell. As we remember in the explanation of feline leukemia, the virus through a reverse transcriptase converts its RNA into viral DNA. This viral DNA enters the nucleus of the cell to remain as a provirus. Feline AIDS remains as a provirus, but not in a true latency state as in the case of feline leukemia, but being as a provirus it will still affect different cells. The number and functionality of CD4 positive T cells will decrease without signs. We are going to continue with the clinical phase in which there will be different mild nonspecific signs, which will go unnoticed in the presence of few retail owners. Signs such as decay, hypothermia, anorexia, the same mild nonspecific signs as always. Now we are going to continue with the AIDS phase, in which there are different signs caused by immunodeficiency. There may be damage due to the feline AIDS virus or due to other agents that complicate the picture. We can observe neurological signs since the virus crosses the blood-brain barrier to reach the brain. There may also be a uveitis, there may be a co-infection with a cryptococcus, as we see in the image. There may also be pododermatitis, inflammation of the gums or gingivostomatitis. Signs may occur due to kidney damage. We have to remember that the subclinical phase, phase 2, phase 3, the clinical phase, can last for months and last up to years in the life of the cat. The feline AIDS virus will affect CD4 helper 1 positive T cells, CD4 positive helper 2 T cells, CD8 positive T cells and macrophages. Therefore, it affects the entire cellular response and then there is going to be a humoral response, we are going to have the antibodies. These antibodies are going to bind to antigens and the function of these antibodies when binding to antigens is first to detect it, identify it, bind and then the complement system comes or a macrophage comes and destroys everything. But since we do not have a cellular response and we have an excess of antibodies, these antibody or immune complex antigens are deposited in different tissues. These immune complexes circulate through the blood and at some point have to be eliminated then they reach the renal glomerulus to try to pass through the renal glomerulus and be eliminated through the urine. But through the renal glomerulus they cannot be filtered, so the immune complexes accumulate and are deposited, affecting the glomerulus, producing inflammation and ultimately kidney failure. This results in a blood test as hypogammaglobulinemia, as there is an excess of antibodies. We can also find other alterations in the blood, such as anemia, a decrease in red blood cells because the bone marrow is having a hard time replacing the red blood cells that are dying, it is a non-regenerative anemia. There will also be a decrease in platelets and a decrease in leukocytes. Now, if we add up the different signs, the different presentations, with the different blood tests, it will make us suspect of feline AIDS, but to confirm it we have to do an ELISA. In addition to ELISA, we can also use other diagnostic techniques such as PCR or Western block. The prevention principles are very similar to what we speak about for the feline leukemia virus. First we have to identify who is sick, conducting the studies. Once we identify it, we also have to do studies on the rest of the cats it lives with, and then we have to know how they get along among the cats, 
since if there are fights between the cats, this disease will be easily transmitted. But what if they don't fight? If they are all calm in harmony, the ideal is that they are not in contact because the healthy cat may have an occasional disease, for example an occasional rhinitis, but that occasional disease for the healthy cat with AIDS can be passed on to the cat with AIDS and it can complicate the picture. So you always have to perform isolation. We must also take into account that it is a retrovirus, which does not have a great survival in the environment, practically null. So if unfortunately a cat dies in a house due to feline AIDS, the next day a new cat can easily enter without risk of getting sick. And finally, we will continue with the castration. Castration eliminates reproductive activity, reducing fights between male cats. It will also reduce trips abroad to search for a female.